welcome back for another 8 Caillou Challenge. This is called Add Length. What if we need the length of the word separated by a space to be added at the end of that same word and have it returned as an array? Check the example. They have some text that reads the words Apple Ban. And what we have to do is take that, turn it into an array containing each of the individual words in the original string, and not only do you copy the word over, but you put a space and then the length of that word after it. So apple has five characters, you get apple space five. Ban is three characters, you get ban space three. And you can probably readily see with the second example too, you get u three will four win three. So we have to implement this function here. I think the instructions are very clear. I think you have a good chance to do this one. So why don't you pause the video? crank it out, come on back when you're ready, and I'll go into it. Okay, I'll do a first solution using basic building blocks, and then I'll show you how to solve it in one line using link. First things first, we have a string, but it's not an individual word, right? It's going to be some space separated collection of words in here, or maybe one word if, if they run some tests at us like that. Doesn't matter. The idea is, though, is that we want to split on word boundaries. And that happens with the space character, right? So we have a built-in method to do that with the string class. Strings have a split method that we can leverage for this purpose. And if you look, there are many overloads. You don't need to worry about all these. The various overloads just offer you different ways of using the split method. We're going to do it really simple here. We're going to use this option. And all you have to pass it is the separator character, which for us is white space. Oftentimes, if you work with uh, files, it might be a comma or something else, or a tab, who knows. But we will put that in. And notice the second parameter here, the, spling, the string split options. And then it says equals uh, in this enumeration that, that essentially sets it to no options. Because there's a a default value here, you don't even have to provide this argument and you just get none by default. So really when we use split, we only need to specify this value and we'll automatically say none. If you did need those options, you could add them. But that's what we're going to use. I'll see if they sh show an example here. No, that's okay. It's simple enough. The one thing to note though that it returns a string array, so it will convert your string into a collection of strings, an array specifically, that are separated by whatever character you say to split on. So that's perfect. We can say then string array, let's call it words or something you like. And we can say string str split, and I'm gonna give it the space character. Notice I use single quotes here, right? Characters or chars are denoted by single quotation marks and strings are double quotation marks. So this is saying to split on a space character. Good. Now I will set up another string array that will hold our result. Because remember, with methods, you can think of them like a contract. You are provided some input and you are contractually obligated to provide the specified output. And in that case, it's a string array. So that's why I set up a string array here. New string array. And I'm going to size it to words.length. We're going to have an entry for each word, right? That's why I, I did this. Arrays have a fixed size, so I specified it. Now the strategy will be to sort of loop over all the words in our new words collection and copy the text, add a space, and add the length, create a new word out of that. So we can say int i equals zero. I'm just going to create a basic uh, for loop here. I can say words.length, I can say plus plus i. And then we can say each time we go through this loop, uh, for each value of i, we want result at position i. It'll start at zero. And then we want the word at position i, the corresponding word, say plus a space, plus words i dot length. That's the length of that specific word. And then as you imagine, when you're done, you can simply return your result. 
I'll hit the test. Good. Hit attempt. Good. This is a fine solution. Feel free to fire this off if you want. If you want the extra credit, stick around for not much longer, and we will do a one-liner using link. So we have to bring in that namespace to use link. And as a reminder, when you are using link methods, I recommend just keeping a tab open with all these methods expanded. You can see at the top that it says which namespace it resides in, and it's system link, and that's why I use that using statement here. So now I have access to those methods. I'll keep the split like I had before. We'll start from there. And then I could say, I should show you select before I use it. I really like this short, simple description of what select does. Projects each element of a sequence into a new form. Isn't that exactly what we're doing here? We're taking words and we're projecting them into a word with its corresponding length. Note that you don't have to project into a form that's the same type, so you don't have to stay with a string. We could project from a string to an int or any other type you want. In this case, we're staying with a string, but I didn't want you to think you were confined to that with this select method. So with that, we can say words. I should say, we have to return something. Return words, select, and now let's put our lambda in here. I'm going to use the variable name word for each element in words. I think that's, I think you'd agree that's an entirely appropriate variable name or parameter name. You can think of these lambda expressions as an in place function. And then what do we want to do with that word? It was like what we did before. So we're going to make it into a string. So I'm setting that up with double quotes. And then I'm going to add this dollar sign here. Don't be intimidated. All this lets me do is it lets me use variable values instead of literal text. And by that, I mean instead of typing out, when I do this, instead of printing the actual letters W-O-R-D, it's going to print the, the word that, that is assigned to this variable. So then we have the word. We can put a space, and then we can put the word length, right? So that's just a nice way of extracting the variable's value instead of the variable name, right? You don't want the variable name. You want the actual word that was split up from the original input text. So let's see. One other problem that I should show you that we haven't fixed yet. You always want to check your return types. These enumerable methods, they return an I enumerable of whatever type you're working with. And so back to the idea of our contract, an I enumerable of string is not a string array. They're different. But you will notice in your enumerable methods that you have a handy to array method you can call. And so we can take this from an, a generic I enumerable collection and put it back into an array, something like this. Good. Nailed it. And so I did say we'll do it on one line. I just want to, I like to do this step by step in the eight Caillou series. Note that we don't need this intermediate variable. You, you can replace words here with what words actually is. So you could cut that out, remove this, replace words with this. And you can see maybe why I didn't jump right to this. I didn't want to intimidate anybody, but it's the same concept. Take the original input string, split it. That will return a string array with words defined by this boundary space, the way we usually think of word boundaries in our, in our language. And then finally, project each of those words into, again, a string, but a different string, which is mostly the same. It's still going to have the word in it, but it's going to have, it's going to be followed by a space and the word's length. So this is equivalent to the last statement, but it'll give us that cool one-liner. Okay. So yeah, that nails it. You saw both ways. 
Let me know if you have any questions or comments. I will submit mine off to get my honor points. You should too. And feel free to check out what other people did. A lot of the same thing going on, probably not much else to see there. Anyways, I will see you in another video. Thanks for watching.